Well, I've been with Cayman Airways about six years, and in those six years, I've really seen Cayman Airways move from an airline that was, I think, struggling a little bit to define exactly what it was and where it was headed to an airline that knows very clearly um, where it's headed and how it's going to get there. If you had asked me five years ago even um, why Cameron has existed, I could have spouted off a few facts and a few details, but we've been able to go through and very clearly define um, what that is. We've also been able to clearly define how we structure our business as well, um, which has made differences in terms of accountability and how we basically structure our overall business um, and day-to-day -day decisions. You know, when, when people ask me what's happening at the airline, I always joke around and say we have our ups and downs. You know, I was referring to planes taking off and landing. Um, and it, get, it gets a smirk, but it also then allows me to transition into sharing with them some of the new and exciting things that are happening. Um, we've just developed a five-year business plan which really focus a lot on a customer service um, improvement and a revenue generation improvement as well. And we've always prided ourselves in the warm Cayman hospitality we offer to people, but just upping that um, as you start traveling with us more over the next few weeks and months and years ahead, you'll start to see improvements at the airport, you'll see improvements in our Sir Turtle Club Lounge, you'll see improvements on board. Again, we provide good service now, but we want to take it to great service and, and we're committed to getting there. Um, we're looking at new routes, we're looking at new ways to use these airplanes to benefit the country. Our focus always is on Cayman. And once we can provide additional uh, services, our routes or whatever that may be that we can provide that benefits the country, um, that's the road we're going to go down. One of the, the things that I look back on, I didn't really have too much to do with it at the time, but one of the things that I look back on, which I think was a, a great achievement for Cayman Airways, was the establishment of Cayman Airways Express as a subsidiary airline. Because the inter-island service that existed before uh, was not as robust as it should have been. Uh, it was a private entity. Um, it served the purpose well. But I don't think in this day and age anything other than something um, with the type of structure and operational capabilities of Cayman Airways, Cayman Airways Express could actually do the job as well. You know, just for, Cayman, for the Cayman Islands, well-being itself, um, looking at the airlift framework that we have, I mean, a, a crucial part of, of that is maintaining airlift to the sister islands. Without that airlift, uh, I don't think the Sister Islands could actually survive. For me, in the midst of everything that has happened, and we could pick so many things that are achievements you know, along the way, I really think that was a, a great milestone for Cayman Airways. There wasn't a subsidiary airline within Cayman Airways before in its 45 years, and, and there is now. And it, it, it interfaces seamlessly with our mainline jet operations. So that for me is something I'm very proud of for Cayman Airways. I'm a, I'm a CPA by profession. Um, I've actually been practicing for uh, uh, um, actually over 30 years um, as, a, as an accountant. In the earlier year, I think in, in 2009 through 2010, we um, pretty much uh, took Cayman Airways, dissected, um, tried to find out um, how it operated, reasons why it's operated, what the costs were, and came up with a airlift framework. We were able to do that because of my, uh, finan of my uh, expertise in financial services. I think sometimes Cayman Airways get uh, unfairly um, the opinions uh, of Cayman Airways, why they do certain things and they don't understand why they do certain things. It is our own national airline and take the hurricane season, for example, that is a perfect example of the need of Cayman Airways to this country and its value. Because when the other carriers pull out at the end of the day, Cayman Airways is flying in, flying out, no matter what. The first thing Cayman Airways does is put aside their regular schedule, try to get tourists to safety, uh, residents to safety. And after, in a disaster, usually Cayman Airways is the first tail that you see land on that airstrip over there.
after 18 years, there have been so many memorable moments. There's literally one every day. But um, I think I'll probably speak about more a period of time at Cayman Airways. And this had to do with our transition from the 737-200s to our first 737-300 in 2003. And I was fortunate enough to be the lead on those negotiations. At the time, I was the Vice President of Maintenance and Engineering. But it was very fulfilling from a technical perspective because we had to make sure that we got the absolute best deal for Cayman Airways, both in terms of the financial elements and the quality of the aircraft that we were, we were trying to acquire. And it was a very long and hard journey. Um, negotiations, of course, are not always filled with smiles, you know, so there were some evenings when you went home and you wondered, is this going to work out the way it should, and, you know. But it all culminated with that aircraft landing here. And when that aircraft landed here, the first 737-300, it signified a significant move because it meant that we are now starting to retire our 200s and we had wanted to do that for such a long time. So to see that first 737-300 land, it really indicated that the process has started. And at this point, we now operate four 737-300s and I'm looking forward to going through that process again, you know, maybe in a couple of years as we move on to even better and newer equipment. So that for me is a, is a particularly important point. The day that we did the rebranding of the airplanes and we took it from just the turtle on the tail to now the new tail that we have. And I never ever saw the tail before until we had the big gathering at the hangar and the plane was due to fly over at a certain time. And I'm telling you, when that airplane flew down right across the hangar and for the first time in my life, I saw the tail, I cried. It was so beautiful. It took my breath away. <laughs> Cayman Airways being around for 45 years so far actually makes it one of the oldest airlines in the world, believe it or not. And I did some research once, and when it comes to our safety record, when that's combined with the length of time that we've been around, we're actually in a very elite group of airlines. It's, it's a very small number, it's like three or four. From a standpoint of the main milestone of Cayman Airways, I don't think there's any other country in the world that could brag that they have a 45-year-old airline with the safety record that Cayman Airways has. And, and you know, the Caymanian people should be very, very proud of that.